This is my new Bridgeport vertical mill. New to me, but it's about uh, 40 or 50 years old. Still have to decode the serial number, 49685. I bought this vertical mill along with this Logan lathe from a local machine shop, a friend of mine, in a package deal. The lathe works great. I took it apart, uh, degreased it, lubed everything again, and now it's uh, running great. Two horse, three phase, with uh, a gear drive head and a variable speed. I wanted to get this running before starting the mill because my plan with the mill is very different. I plan to uh, also take this all apart, but also strip the paint, um, polish some of the bright work, and then repaint and rebuild with a lot of new uh, parts up in the top of the head. So I'm getting ready to start today, and it's my plan to remove the top half of the head the motor, pull off the head, take off the ram and turret, and depending on how that goes, I'll move into removing the table and the knee. And the goal here is to get everything off of the mill and get it down to just the base so I can take it outside to power wash and then degrease and then needle scale degrease again and then paint and the same goes for the knee and the easiest way for me to do this is to take it apart in pieces and uh, complete them one at a time so i'll be using my Gantry crane made of wood in the back corner of the garage to take this apart piece by piece. And I'm going to get started on it now. Thanks for watching. If you're working on a Bridgeport mill, check out videos by H&W Machine Repair. Their videos are a great resource on YouTube and give you step-by-step -step instructions. Okay, we got the ram and the turret and the uh, head off, motor, pulleys, and the bracket that holds the turret and ram down. I was happy to find out that the ram was not frozen to the turret. This was broke when I got it, so I was a little concerned that maybe the uh, previous owner hit this with a hammer to break it free, but thankfully it was loose. Also, um, the head is rotating like it's supposed to as well. So nothing is frozen so far. It looks like it'll just take normal uh, disassembly procedures. No heat or anything yet. This video showcases the logistics of rebuilding a piece of equipment like this. There are many step-by-step -step videos on YouTube that explain uh, how to disassemble one of these. This video really though is just showing uh, ways I took care of some of the heavier lifting and organization of uh, taking on a project like this. Pile of parts so far. I'm about two and a half hours into this project to give everybody an idea of how much space you need if you plan to disassemble one of these and uh, rebuild it piece by piece. Before taking all these parts a part uh, looks like it's one big pallet plus the knee is by itself right now the ram and the turret are still together and this is totally bare at this point
the ram and the turret came apart as expected. Thankfully, uh, they were not froze together. So once you pull the uh, gear rod out, uh, I was able to slide the turret off of the ram using uh, gravity as my friend and then pushed it outside for cleaning. Here again, showing the virtues of the needle scaler for removing old paint. This is a perfect example of how, uh, you know, maybe three or four different coats of old paint have been put on this machine. And there's even a coat of filler from the factory. So if you're trying to remove all those things with like a wire brush, it could be a lot of work. But uh, with the needle scaler, I'll show you how this comes off real quick. Relatively speaking, of course. I also like using chemical strippers too, but um, with this one, the needle scaler seems to be working really well. So, quick video showing how well this works. Needle scalers are pretty cheap. I bought mine at TP Tools. It was like 50 or 60 bucks, so uh, well worth the investment for a home shop. I wanna be able to move the mill around the garage as needed uh, since I have a relatively small garage for the uh, stuff I typically have in here. Having it mobile will really make it uh, much easier to use in my shop. So here's the base. There's the ram and the turret and the knee. And this is something I made up with two by four square tubing and eight casters. And these are leveling casters and they have uh, little feet that come out. You twist a little knob here and it raises the foot. So if it is teeter tottering or not perfectly level, in theory, you can uh, lower these feet and get it nice and flat. So, okay, I'm going to try to pick up the base and set it on these casters. The ability to move the mill around my shop is very important. I changed the layout of my garage based on what the project is, and this is much better than leaving it on a pallet and using pallet forks. Uh, the casters are from Caster HQ, and if you have any questions about how I built it, uh, let me know. Okay, the base is done, the turret is done, the ram and the knee are both done as well. I built the rolling platform for the mill. I think that's gonna work out really well. I know only a portion of the weight is on it right now, but it seems like these casters are really going to hold up well with the added weight. And this mill weighs about 2,000 pounds I think 2,200 pounds is what it's supposed to be, plus whatever you're working on. So if four are rated at one ton, the eight that I put on there is really what I think is overkill, but I definitely don't want to have to worry about it if I do have to move this around my shop. The pallet is still full of a bunch of parts that I need to go through and clean and organize. Speaking of cleaning, here's my contraption to clean the bed, the saddle, and all the screws, and a bunch of other parts. The kiddie pool is basically a backup in case the plastic breaks. And in here is a purple power degreaser, mixed at a ratio of like uh, one to five, I think. So, I know it's working because I could see bubbles appearing. Also, the water that I mixed with it is cold and the heated floor is warm. So I'm hoping the convection of the water will uh, also help, you know, move the fluid around and clean some of the grease off. So that's where I'm at after working on this for about four days. And it's going just about as well as I thought it would go. 
using the gantry crane was really the trick to getting this done efficiently. Without it and having to use an engine crane probably would add an extra half day to this job as well as I'm sure I would have hurt my back. So that gantry crane really was a fun project. I'm glad I did it. Okay, that ends this part of the mill. The next part will be cleaning up the rest of these parts that are in my degreaser, organizing all this, and maybe even painting. So that'll be coming up soon. Thanks for watching.